Traveling this bending road is always an adventure, and I'm glad we can do it together. It's easier together because no matter where we go in life, two things are for certain. One, you will eventually come to a bend in your road, and two, God will always see you through. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button so that you know when I upload my next video. In this way, we travel together and we encourage each other along the way. Welcome back to The Bending Road. Glad you could join me this week. What a what a season we're in, right? We're we're moving into we're now into October and the fall is here, cooler temperatures and and it's been I don't know, it's been raining pretty constant here. Um, but we're looking for some better temperatures over the weekend, a little drier and hopefully get out in the camper a little bit for a fall excursion. That'll be fun. We, um, I don't know if you watched the uh, presidential, vice presidential debate the other night. I didn't stay up and watch it. I don't know why they put those things on so late. Maybe it's so that nobody can really see right, <laughs> what's going on. But I do look forward to watching some of the recaps after I get done with my work today and, and check it out and see what's what's happening and see um, the big the big headline this morning is well he lied well he lied they fact checked they lied so and so lied everybody lies you know and and all I keep hearing is um, Harris lies and Trump lies and Biden lies and it's like come on come on folks you know not not everybody is lying you know um, first of all sometimes we see things differently right? Um, sometimes we misinterpret facts, right? It's not a lie. It's a misinterpretation. Sometimes um, you might think somebody's lying because you see it different, right? Sometimes we lie. Sometimes we just, we don't like the truth. So we bend and shape it. So it sounds a little bit better. And you know, if I, I, I confess that I've done that over time, I, you know, there, there are things that I've said and done that, that show a lack of integrity. And I, to be honest with you, I don't like that in me. I do not like that. And, and this whole um, election thing and the, the, the news reports, everything I watch, I get really tired of hearing about how so-and-so has lied and so-and-so has lied. Now this, this is not a judgment on whether they did or not. I'm not even going into those details. Um, but it did get me thinking about integrity, integrity. And I know for me, I don't like that lack of integrity. And sometimes you do things and you know you're doing them. Sometimes you do things and you don't realize you're doing them. You say something and go, oh, wait, wait a minute. No, that's, that's not exactly how that happened. Um, but did you then go back and make it right? You know, that, that's a good question. You know, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I don't believe for a minute that I'm the only one who struggles with this. So I looked at integrity in Webster. And I, I, I always like to look at words in Webster and see if we're really using them that way. Um, the first one is incorruptibility, right? A firm adherence to a code of morals or values. Okay, so incorruptibility. The other one is soundness, unimpaired condition. And that got me thinking of the fall and, and the brokenness of the image of God within us that needs to be restored through Jesus Christ. Um, then the third one is the state or quality of being complete or undivided, um, like honesty. We're not divided um, in our opinions and our thoughts. We're, we're fully honest. Um so I thought, wow, this that that whole thing is a it's a sermon into itself, right? So that made me think about the the phrase, you know, do as I say, not as I do, right? So that's kind of what I was thinking about with the election cycle. I feel like one politician gets up and 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 lies and then calls out the other one for lying and then the other one gets up and they lie and they call out somebody else for lying and it's a it's a do as i say not as i do 
scenario, right? And I wondered, where does that saying come from? Why do we use that? And, and how old is that? That must be, well, you know, fairly recent. Well, if you Google it, love Google, um, as, as far as you can trust this, it says it goes back to John Selden's Table Talk before my time. It was published in 1654. So I don't feel so bad that I've never heard of it. Um, but it lists it as an old English proverb that has been passed down through the generations. An old English proverb? I thought that was strange. Um, I'm not sure that I would call this a proverb. Do as I say, not as I do. But, okay. It's really just a lack of integrity, right? I tell you to do things, but I don't do them. It's like the parent, and I was there, the parent who smokes and tells their kids don't ever smoke. Um, the, the parent who says, you know, you need to get out and get some exercise, get out of the house, go run around, and they're sitting in their chair doing their thing. We've all done it. So I wonder what the Bible said about integrity, and I, I can see that it says a lot about integrity. It says a lot about dishonesty. It d says a lot about lying and falsehoods and so forth and being double-minded. But I, I picked up on, on Job. I, I just, you know, I like some of the truths in Job that really um, highlight some of our situations. But in verse 3, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him and ruined him without any reason. He still remains, he, st he still maintains his integrity, even though all the trouble that he's experienced, even with all the struggles that he has, he maintains his integrity, his soundness, his honesty. I find that fascinating because it's really easy to justify um, a lack of integrity when we're going through hard struggles. And I know Dave and I struggled with this too when we were um, without work for, you know, out of between churches, I'll say, for, for a few months. Um, we need to make sure we maintain our integrity. We need to make sure that we are not talking ill of other people, that we're not blaming somebody whose fault this is not, right? And I said over and over, this is nobody's fault. We chose to do this. Um, you know, we needed to maintain our integrity. Proverbs, of course, there's a proverb about this. The integrity of the upright guides them. But the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. That's Proverbs 11.3. So the integrity of the upright, that, that standard, right? That, that unfailing standard guides the upright. We all, you know, we've said this before, nothing to the left, nothing to the right. Jesus only straight ahead. That's the integrity that keeps us going. But the unfaithful are destroyed in their duplicity. Hmm, do I go this way? I could do that. Or oh, I'm feeling this today. I'm not feeling that today. How, you know, what am I doing? And, and you're kind of like here, there, everywhere. Um, so I thought that was a good proverb. And then Titus 2, 7 and 8 this is really calls us firmly. It says in everything, everything, right? And everything includes everything. All means all. Set them an example by doing what is good. So set other people an example by doing good so they can learn, right? In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about you. Wow. Live in such a way that nobody can say anything bad about you. They're actually ashamed that they spoke ill about you because they can't find anything wrong. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could um, investigate our politicians and find total integrity? Absolutely nothing wrong. Sorry, I got a dog barking in the background. But these are the words um, 
you know, that, that, that we, we could really live by in everything, set an example by doing what is good in our teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about you. Boy, that would be an amazing political comp uh, campaign slogan, right? Integrity first would be pretty amazing. It also would be a pretty amazing um, motto for preachers and churches and leaders and Sunday school teachers, youth directors, all of us, musicians in the church, all of us need to have that integrity. I think a lack of integrity sneaks in. I don't think we set out to be disingenuous. Like I said, sometimes we'll say something and, and all of a sudden, well, that's not exactly right, I guess. I'm not sure why I said that and, and have to go back and, and backpedal a bit. Um, but there's also things that we we agree to. Um, let me use, I'm going to use a tough example, right? Okay, so, so we say that, um, we may say we're pro-life, okay? We're pro-life. Um, and then we say, but, you know, in, in a case of rape or incest, that's an exception because that, that, uh, maybe a child or that individual shouldn't have to carry that, that baby to term. Um, well, then that's not pro-life. Those two things are in conflict with each other. So then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a situation where our integrity is not quite there. Can we do both? Can we say that everybody has a right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and then take a life by whatever means? Um, take a life through abortion or doctor-assisted suicide or promote the right to suicide. Um, everybody has a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um I mean, that's, you know, I've, I've talked about those kinds of issues recently, um, not because they're the most important issues. They're big issues. I think they're important issues. Um, but it's, it seems to be what's popping into my head as I'm, as I'm random rambling. I think we need to be careful. Um, you know, we also have, here's, here's another good example. And I've, I've, I've shared this sort of thing before. We say God can do everything. There is nothing that God cannot do. Um, God can move mountains. God, God can heal. God can do. And then, and then we fail to go to God in prayer. Um, we instead sit home and worry and fret. Or maybe we say that, that God is in charge of our finances and then we fail to give our tithe to the church or, or we don't seek God in making big financial decisions. You know, there's things like that, that we need to check our integrity. And and it maybe it doesn't matter what side of an issue you come down on, but you need to know why you do. And you need to make sure that you're consistent throughout um, in talking about those kinds of issues and does everything align to that. It's like the scripture. You know, we say that the scripture is God-breathed. It's It's got everything we need for faith and practice. It is infallible or however you, you say that. And then we don't read it. Or we read it, but we don't believe it. Or we believe it, but we don't act on it. Um, that's a lack of integrity. And we need to check that. We need to work on that. Um, so the, it's my prayer that we would all, all of us, be um, attentive to the Spirit of God so that when the Spirit says, um, hey, there's a little lack of integrity there, that we can stop and make that right. Or we can, we can search our hearts, ask God to search our hearts and show us where we are having a lack of integrity. Where are the things that we need to align our words with our thoughts, with our prayers, with what we read in scripture, with what we believe, and make sure all of those things line up. Well, this has been an interesting random ramblings, and I, I, I hope that you have... Um, been encouraged to, to double check yourself, I guess. And and I am. I, I certainly am. And I hope and pray for every candidate that 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 we have, um, president, vice president, um, spouses, 
um, everybody that they would put in office, I just pray God's blessing. And if they don't have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, it's my prayer that they would turn to God and seek his face and um, be holy, holy his. Whether it costs the election or not, doesn't matter. The election is not the most important thing. It's their it's their saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's my prayer for them. That's my prayer for you. Have a great week, and we will see you next week along the bending road. Thank you for watching, and thank you for working together along this journey. Connect with me on social media or on my website at bendingroad.weebly.com. Let me know how I can pray for you as you navigate the bend in your road. I pray that when you see the bend in your road, you will not be afraid, but will take the hand of God and keep walking. You are not alone.